Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion today with Pastor Sutton on this Christmas Eve. A Merry Christmas Eve to you. Um, although Christmas Eve doesn't come till Christmas Eve, does it? So that would be like sunset today. So like 4.30 would be happy Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah. Cold. 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 Uh, I, uh, I don't see a bout post from Bonnie with temperatures yet, but um, but it's one below here without any doubt. That's what the weather service is giving us. I'm refreshing my screen because, again, I'm not getting comments that I think are probably there. I mean, I, I kind of know who of you comments and says something uh, and uh, kind of gives me a hint uh, of uh, who's here versus... Um, well, anyway, I told Bonnie I don't want to go on a rant. This thing with We Energies has got me upset. It, uh, it, it demonstrates that there is a fundamental problem in our nation right now. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, but there is a fundamental problem here. Um, things that are being said and asked of this people have never been said or asked until now. Uh, and it's crazy. Anyway, uh, Christmas Eve, um, the uh, uh, Epiphany Part 2, because yesterday we had um, the, the um, uh, Herod. Today we're going to have uh, Luther's uh, the homily and the wise men from the from the little Christmas book here. So we're going to finish the, the Epiphany reading um, from, from Matthew and, uh, and move into, uh, move into the, the, uh, the King Herod stuff, or the, the wise men stuff. So, uh, but first, good morning, Geraldine and Neil. Good morning to you guys. Merry Christmas. Deb and Grant and Ann, good morning to you guys. Um, and Jerry, good morning. Cold, blowing, snowy day. Okay, are you guys? You know, I didn't look at the, I didn't look at the weather service today just to see where everything is at. I um, uh, for us the the snow is done. There were some flurries here, um, last night maybe, um, but primarily just wind and cold. Um, yeah. The, the national, well, here, I'll share this with you guys because I've got it up here. Um, the, the national weather, well, the AccuWeather's radar is showing us this stuff here around you guys in Michigan there. Wisconsin's clear, but, but and this looks to me like it's all lake effect. Um, over here by Muskegon and Holland, um, up here in Traverse City, it looks like up by Traverse City, it's pretty good. And even, even here in the Thumb, uh, it looks like you guys are getting a little bit off of here on there. You know, the lakes aren't frozen over. And uh, Mark Torregrossa would say that the, so long as the lakes aren't frozen over, um, you're going to have some of that uh, ongoing ongoing lake effect snow. So, well, all right. Um, good morning to those in the background who haven't said hi or chimed in. If I, if I missed you because your post isn't showing up to where I can see it, I apologize. Um, it's a Facebook thing and, and, fa oh, okay, here, I got a few more now. I just updated again and <clears throat> I don't know why it's doing this. It's really, an oh, oh, there's a lot now. All right. So, uh, there's Bonnie and she piped in and then Verna, good morning. And Ashley, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Renee, hello there. Jill and John up in Rhinelander, good morning. Maybe we'll see you guys this evening. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. And Mr. Wettstein and Karen, good morning to you. I hope you're not freezing out down there in Florida. Um, yeah, just as a side note, uh, services here um, at, uh, uh, at, at Faith and Harshaw, uh, Christmas Eve will be at 5 o'clock tonight and Christmas Day Divine Service at 8.30 tomorrow morning, the last 8.30 service before we switch. And down here at St. Paul in Irma, uh, Faith and Harshaw, St. Paul in Irma, um, 7 o'clock, the children's uh, program, Footprints 
to the manger and at, at tomorrow morning at 10.30, um, divine service, uh, Christmas Day divine service. So uh, just an FYI to those who are who are watching uh, who might need a place to uh, go for this, for this holiday. Um, yeah, and to those watching the background, good morning to those watching later today. Hello, I'm glad you're you're joining us. Let's quit fooling around and get into this. It is Christmas Eve. We all have stuff to do today. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Matthew chapter two verses seven through eighteen. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise. Take the child to his mother, or and take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Luther, here in our little Christmas book, um, need to get to the right section here. Should have put a bookmark in here. That would have made sense. Uh, that's Herod. And after Herod comes the wise men. Should have been the wise men and then Herod, I think. But All right. From Martin Luther. <clears throat> Actually for my coffee cup first. <clears throat> then, Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, <clears throat> inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, <clears throat> Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you when you when ye have found him, being bring me being me, hmm, typo. Bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. We can see from this text that these wise men were not kings and princes, merely honorable men like professors and preachers. Herod treated them as subjects when he commanded them to go to Bethlehem and bring him word. He would not have done this if they had been kings or lords. He would have invited them to dine and would have accompanied them on their way with royal treatment. For all histories say that Herod was a smooth man who observed the etiquette of the courts. Since he summoned them secretly, they must have been of a much lower station. And why secretly? Was not all in the land under his control? Because he knew well that the Jews hated him. And had the interview been public, they might have sought to induce the wise men to mislead him, that the new king might slip through his fingers. He inquired as to the exact appearance of the star because he had already made up his mind about the, his mind to slaughter the innocents. He thought to himself, if a new king is born, 
the Jews will be glad. They will hide him until he has grown up, and then they will bring him to light and kill me. Therefore I must get ahead of them and inquire warily. If he is hidden, I will catch him anyway by killing all of the children at the same time. To carry out this crafty decision, he represented himself to the Magi as a very humble and reverent and desiring of worshiping him. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Now the wise men had the faith to follow the word of the prophet Micah. They were not offended that the king was not born in Jerusalem. They left the temple and went to the cow stall. If I had been there, I would have stayed in the temple and said, God dwells here, and if the child is to be found anywhere in the world, it will be where the, all the priests are gathered and God is served. We may profit from the example of these heathen who took no offense when directed from Jerusalem to the great city, to little Bethlehem. They followed the word, and God comforted them by putting back the star, which led them now to Bethlehem, and to the very door where the young child lay. <clears throat> Here the evangelist shows us the true nature of faith, how they believed simply in what they had not seen and held fast to the word. That is why God brought them from their land to where they should hear the word, but God let them first fall into error and bewilderment. They thought the child would be born in the capital, in Jerusalem, and that is where they went. Then the star left them, and no one in the city so much as knew what a king or that a king was to be born. The wise men supposed that he would be born in circumstances of pomp, like the son of a potentate. God did not leave them long in their error, but showed them through the scripture that they would not find him as they supposed in the big city, but in a little village. And he directed them to the royal town of Bethlehem. This was a grievous cross to the wise men. Common sense said to them, you are fools to have made this long journey at the behest of a star. And everything at the capital is still. No one knows anything about it. The people tell us to go to Bethlehem, and we do not know whether we shall find him there. You will notice that none of the Jerusalemites went along. They left the babe to lie where he was and did not go to him, though they might well have done so from the ends of the earth. But they let these foreigners go to find out where he was while well, they neglected him through fear of the tyrant Herod. Faith, however, pays no regard to what it sees and feels, but clings only to the word. The wise men were cast down and offended. They had started out in the confident expectation of finding him, and as matter of fact, found nothing. The evangelist makes plain how rebuffed they felt when he says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. It is as if they had said, when the star reappeared, we were very happy and thought, it is right after all, we were not deceived. We must do the same thing and hold fast to the word. The struggle the wise men passed through, and because they believed the word of the prophet, God sent the star again, more friendly than the first time. It was close to them as their guide. They were certain now and did not need to ask the way. The first time it was far off, and they were not sure where they could find the king. It is always so with a Christian man. After a spiritual struggle, God is so heartfelt, so near and clear, that not only does a man forget the anguish and the struggle, but they are endeared to him. And now he is so strong that he is no longer offended by the lowliness of Christ, for he has come to see that he who would find Christ must be ready to find only shame, as the Magi were ashamed when the star failed. Their joy on the reappearance shows that they had suffered no little shock, but when they came through the struggle, they were newborn for delight and no longer offended in Christ. And when they, came, when they were come into the house, they saw the young child and with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. 
And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Though they saw but a tumble-down shack and a poor young mother with a poor little babe, not a king at all, meaner than one of their own servants, they did not shrink, but in great strong faith cast out all misgivings and common sense. And following simply the word of the prophet and the witness of the star, they accepted him for a king, fell on their knees, worshipped him, and presented their treasures. The world would not have done so, but according to her want, would have looked for a velvet cushion and a host of servants and maids. The word, the world, makes presents to those who already have enough, and to provide them snatches, snatches the bread from the mouths of the hungry who have nothing but what they earn with their bloody sweat. If we Christians would join the wise men, we must close our eyes to all that glitters before the world and look rather on the despised and foolish things. Help the poor, the comfort the despised, and aid the neighbor in his need. Do not boast that you have built churches and endowed masses. God will say, What to me are your churches and masses? What do I care about your altars and your bells? Do I take pleasure in stone and wood? Is not the heaven my throne and the earth the footstool of my feet? Who told you to build churches? Have I set? I have set before you spiritual temples. These you should build, feed, and help. But you have gone about doing foolish things, which I commanded not. I know you not. Let us then observe how these wise men took no offense at the mean estate of the babe and his parents, that we may also not be offended in the mean estate of our neighbor, but rather see Christ in him, since the kingdom of Christ is to be found among the lowly and the despised in persecution, misery, and the Holy Cross. Those who seek Christ anywhere else find him not. The wise men discovered him not at Herod's court, not with a high priest, not in the city of Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem, in the stable, with lowly folk, and Mary and Joseph. In a word, they found him where one would have least expected. They presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Incense is a live confession, full of faith, by which we offer all that we have and are to God. The wise men traversed a long distance to bring this gift. Spiritually, we can bring it swiftly and easily. The gift of our gold is that we should confess Christ as king, laying aside our own esteem and the dictates of our reason and good intentions, that we should present ourselves as foolish, naked, and ready to be ruled. The sons of obedience are tractable, gladly accept their king and bring all into submission to Christ. The incorrigibles who resist their king fall into tumult, anger, dissension, murmuring, and blasphemy. Thus we see that incense is faith, and gold is hope, because faith believes that all things are and ought to be of God. Hope accepts and sustains what faith believes. The myrrh is love. Faith takes us from ourselves that we should refer everything to God with praise and gratitude. Hope, fill, <clears throat> hope fills us with the concerns of others that we may endure all in patience without resentment. Love reduces us to that, that nothing which we were in the beginning, so that we desire neither goods nor anything outside God, but simply that we should commit ourselves truly to his good pleasure. This is the way of the cross by which we come most speedily into life. We can present our gifts in the same way as the Lord says, insomuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. He who gives of his goods to help the poor, to send children to school, to educate them in God's word and other arts, that we may have good ministers, he is giving to the baby Jesus. He was not only born to, to poor and needy, but also on account of Herod, had at once to flee the country. On the journey into Egypt, the presence of the wise men must have come in very handy. So in our day, we should not forget those who are suffering persecution. Amen. 
We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Prayers for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Righteousness, shine into my heart and life today. Help me to reflect your light so those who do not yet know you as Lord and Savior might be directed to you. Thank you for bearing the guilt of my sins. Let the sin and evil that may threaten today have no power over me. Grant me the grace to recognize your will and the faith to do it. In all my dealings with others today, let me be guided by this precept. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Keep me connected to you as a branch of the true vine, that I may draw the strength to abound in good works from you. May you be glorified today in all that I do. In your name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those on this day who suffer in body, mind, or soul, and those who await surgery or are recovering from the same. Especially this day, we pray for Bill, for Neely, for Ezra, for Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them strength, O Lord, in their times of suffering. And give them the assurance and comfort of your holy promise of eternal life. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, Christmas Eve, uh, gather with your brothers and sisters in Christ and hear the story of the Nativity in one way or another on this Christmas Eve, whether it be in readings and hymns or in the divine service or in a children's pageant that shows forth the promise of the coming Christ child. And tomorrow morning, don't make an excuse. But Sunday, go receive those gifts which the Lord has given us through the birth of his son and through his death and resurrection, which gives us the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. That is for you this Christmas holiday. God's peace be with you. I will see you on Monday, I guess. Yeah, it's already Saturday. So God's peace be with you.